All right, so here's my uh, M35A3. It's a uh, deuce and a half. It's a 24 volt uh, truck. Uh, military, this particular one is uh, probably the first one's out. Uh, it's about a 1993, 1994. Uh, it's got the, hooked it up with a CB and a couple other things, obviously. Um, one of the things I just wanted to show you today was the uh, power supply that I put in, power inverter. So this converts 12 volts, uh, 24 volts, excuse me, to 110 power. So this is uh, hooked up in the back. You can see uh, the power coming in, 24 volts coming in. The uh, the red uh, the red uh, cable is two gauge. The black one is four gauge. It's a battery uh, welding cable, copper. So this is a pure sine wave inverter. Uh, obviously pure sine wave is uh, critical when it comes time to uh, run things such as fluorescent lights, etc. It uh, doesn't give you any jitter or anything like that. Um, so this is uh, the 110 connector. This is actually a universal plug. So you can actually plug uh, international systems in here. But uh, not, not required obviously in this case as we're US. This, uh, this system as you can see is um, put right up to the uh, in the back of the chair just bolted it right in you notice the uh, slant here of the chair the comfortable slant means that this unit actually um, because of this this is this mark right here uh, had to be pushed down about five inches or so almost to the end not obviously right to the end but pretty close to the end so that uh, when this angle went down it didn't uh, impact this the steel back here so you want to make sure you keep that clear. This is uh, raised off because of the uneven surface. There's an extra couple of uh, washers or nuts actually underneath uh, so that you've got a lot of space in here. Um, now this is of course designed to be used when the truck is running but for the purpose of this demonstration and we're only going to use do this for a temporary amount of time uh, I'm going to run this actually uh, in power just off of the battery because you can. Uh, so here's the key for the this is a um, fluorescent bulb. This is what you would expect to see uh, when you would with a pure sine wave. Notice you don't see any jitter or anything like that. The, uh, the light just shines nice and cleanly. Uh, if you don't have pure sine wave you start getting uh, jitter which is bad for electronic components etc. So if, you know when you do your cell phone charging or something like that you want to make sure you have clean power. That's what the pure sine wave gives you. So that's an, a nice feature there. The other uh, point is, of course, when you uh, connect this up to your system, you want to make sure your battery uh, is able to supply uh, 27 volts, uh, 27 and a half volts, because obviously it's a 24 volt battery system, but with the charger running, that works out to uh, about 27 and a half volts. So here is the uh, what we've done to kind of plug this in, uh, the positive, negative, extra cables in here. Now this is for part of the CB and other 12 volt systems that I have in here so there's a there's actually this is actually a 12 volt converter uh, that will give me uh, 60 amps and 12 volts and this is a, uh, a power uh, filter to try to eliminate the the uh, the noise from the truck idling and the uh, alternator uh, from the uh, CB radio etc so and of course everything is uh, properly fused to prevent it from uh, damage etc now as, as I've now become you know critical for the um, power inverter, you know, it, this, this, keeping this battery charged at all times is, is very important to me. So what I've done is I've actually uh, grabbed a 24 volt uh, battery. This is actually a handicap wheelchair charger. So it's a uh, eight. It provides eight amps. So your standard trickle charger is about one amp on a trickle charger. Not very uh, helpful on charging such a, a large, massive uh, pair of batteries. So this I uh, moved to a trickle charger, and, um, and not not a bad price. This thing could be probably picked up for about thirty five bucks off of eBay or something like that. Um, and this has got a uh, XLR connector on it. And with the help of my father, we put in a XLR connector here to provide um, locking uh, charging mechanism. So with the door closed, uh, obviously with the the. Uh, battery trays out but with the door closed this isn't impacted 
you know, even in the rain, this can kind of hide up underneath the, uh, the bed of the truck and, and still get a full charge that way. So uh, very helpful that way. So that's just for ch keeping the battery charged with uh, 8 amps of power. <coughs> um, the second piece is here is that uh, with this power inverter, put together a little cheat sheet here, this is uh, the amount of power it can produce. So this is a 27, uh, you know, with a bat truck running, it provides 27 volts at about 60 amps on the charger. So, or the alternator, if you want to call it that, the alternator, uh, which works out to about 1,600 um, watts of power. Uh, if you convert it to 110 volts, that works out, and obviously you have to, because it's being converted, you have to do it at about 85% because you're going to lose energy when you do the conversion. So, at about 85%, that works out to about 18 amps at 110 volts. Uh, you know, kind of giving you uh, some ideas. Um, uh, 18 amps at 110 volts is pretty significant. Now, because this is running off of a you know significant battery, the peak at 35,000 watts, which is what this unit runs at, for probably you know I don't know 15, 20 minutes or so, you could run at um, about 37 amps at 110 volts. So you know. 15, 20 minutes, so, you know, obviously your battery would start to drain. Uh, the nice thing about this unit is, is once the uh, unit starts going below uh, the 20, um, 24 volts, this unit will actually shut off. So it actually got a fault indicator here and actually will uh, shut off. And as part of installation, we've had some under uh, voltage situations and some over voltage situations, and uh, this unit did actually shut off as it said it would. So that uh, you know, beep gives you a couple of audible beeps and then turns itself off. So very, uh, very useful. So with that said, let's try to do some things with it. So I've got here is a, this is a, a light. It's about uh, 500 watts uh, per side. So we'll just plug that in here. Uh, and then plug this in. So this is uh, this is right now is approximately a, a thousand watts running off of here. Uh, and let's see what else we got. Okay, yeah, here we have this. I don't know how much power this is. I don't know. Maybe it's about 900 watts. I don't know. <coughs> so bear with me. Plug this in. <coughs> so. Right off of the battery at this point, obviously for extended use, you'd run the truck, so that's uh, pretty handy. Uh, the other piece, you know, something like this would be useful for is you know like a water water uh, water pump. So if you had a water pump, you could certainly run a water pump off of this. Try not to get myself soaking wet here. <clears throat> so let's see. So obviously I don't have an on-off switch on this water pump, so when I plug it in. It will just kind of squirt a ton of water up into the air. So that's, uh, again, right off of the truck. And this is off of the truck battery at this point. So there we go. I can turn these lights off now. And I think the only other thing I wanted to show you on this uh, thing was this piece here. Just in case you had to, uh, this is how you'd adjust the uh, power for the alternator. Uh, all you need is a small, small Phillips head, an Allen wrench, and right here, this is the alternator on the truck. So just kind of pan out a little bit so you actually see where I'm talking about. So here's the alternator on the truck, right? It's nice and easy, easy access. And here is the screw port. Pop that open and turn the screw underneath. So use your Allen wrench to take that off. You be very careful; you'll lose it. Uh, the other thing too is that when you take this off, you probably want to run the truck for about half an hour because this is probably frozen in there. So run this truck, heat this up for about half an hour. Um, don't obviously because of all this plastic and electrical gear. Don't try to get your torch in there and uh, give it a little assistance warming up. Um, so let your truck run, heat this up. And then uh, use your Allen wrench in here, and then once this little piece is taken out, so you know, use your hand to, to catch this uh, little piece as it comes out, because there's there's no uh, nothing to hold it. So when this comes out, catch it as it falls out, and uh, and then just use your Phillips head, turn it clockwise to lower the 
voltage. So my, my problem was I was running at about 32 volts, uh, which is full. Basically somebody cranked this puppy up all the way. So that's just kind of a something to do. All right. So that's kind of uh, what I've done to the truck. And uh, I do have a, a special secret here, another piece. So hang on for a second. This is the uh, power unit I end up buying from eBay. Um, basically, you get various options. I picked the uh, 35, uh, oh, not 48, I picked the 24 volt. Yeah, you got to be careful, make sure you pick the right one. <laughs> and uh, this is the uh, the guy I bought it from. The nice reason why I put this, uh, picked this one is that. Uh, it actually, um, down here, uh, ships from the United States, so that was uh, one of the reasons. It's about uh, $30 more than if you get one shipped uh, from China, so that's uh, kind of the purpose of that. And, um, you know, if you compare it to the ones that, um, you know, are U.S. made or pretend to be made in America, I'm not sure if this is U.S. made or not, but, you know, this is a 3,000 watt. Uh, pure sine wave one, and this is a thousand dollars. So a pretty big difference. Um, yeah, obviously the key word here is pure sine wave. That's the one you need. It's a pure sine wave one, uh, and this is uh, a competitor, thousand dollars. So Chinese knockoff is uh, definitely a, a worthwhile item. Uh, you know, something worthwhile. I, you know, as, as far as what I need, uh, and the price is right. So. Very happy with the pure sine wave. If you get one that's not pure sine wave, obviously the, the price is about half, but you can't use fluorescent lights and you have some other challenges with some of the other atoms, items, so not, not preferred. So pure sine wave is what you want. One of the things we noticed with the power inverter was that the, once we took it apart, uh, was that the copper coil uh, was rubbing against the case. So what we did was we just cut a hole in the case so that the copper coil would not uh, rub against the case. Now normally these, these cases I assume are used for indo into indoor solar systems uh, which are bolted to the wall or something like that. Um, you know, or, or pulled off of batteries from somebody's houses. But, but uh, when you apply it to a, a mobile application like a truck or something like that, there's a lot of vibration that goes, you know, when you go over bumps and stuff, and that rubbing would have caused some challenges with the copper, and at some point would have, uh, you know, broken one of those copper coils, uh, you know, over time. So we, we cut a hole in the case. So the last thing I wanted to show you was, uh, you know, obviously you take a uh, power cord and uh, run it to the side of the house. So what we did is uh, drill a hole in the side of the house, put a... Uh, PVC pipe in there for the hole. This is the, uh, the hole right here. Just a little a bit elbow down. You put a plastic PVC cap on here when you're not using it. So here's the uh, the port inbound to the house. Comes in through the uh, PVC pipe right here. Um, so what we did in order to run the truck power into the house was uh, obviously the most important thing is to make sure we have hot water so the pipes don't freeze in the winter so it's very key that we have uh, hot water for obviously showers and uh, hot water um, heat so we have uh, baseboard uh, heat that's water so we don't want frozen pipes in the winter very bad for anything so what we did was we took the um, power off of the furnace which we track the, the furnace all the way back to the fuse box here uh, and determine that you know based on the fuse box it was here furnace um, and we unplugged that from the furnace uh, and ran basically ran it into this box here and this box then in turn this this cable um, Romex cable hard to see here but this Romex cable actually uh, just all it does is loop down it's a pass through loops down right through here and into this well this is just basically a, a watt meter that I have to make sure that we're um, not going to overload the truck 
this uh, under full load is probably about uh, about 600 watts. That's all the water pumps uh, running at the same time. Maybe about 900 watts. So really not a problem. So we basically use this as a dead man switch kind of. Is um, the Romex basically terminates here, and then if we want, we just plug this uh, back into here, which is the power, which is the house power. So this is Romex goes into the fuse box here. So this dead man switch basically prevents us from accidentally connecting the house power or I should say powering the street because you don't want to connect the truck power to the street. So this basically prevents either you're on house power or you're not. So to remove from house power, uh, which is our street power, we want to call it that, all you do is you unplug this and plug it into here. Uh, and this box, all this box is, is uh, each one of these is a separate outlet. And they basically just run uh, to these cables here, which these two connectors, excuse me, can then be plugged into, you know, extension cords going to the truck. So we've got two, and, and it's worth noting here that um, I can't remember exactly, but I believe that the two outlets on the truck are uh, are not shared, so they're individual. So. Even though it's 35,000 watts of power, it's actually divided by two. Um, so really, one outlet is only half of that. So you want to make sure you load balance your power. So I've got two power plugs here. Each one of these plugs actually goes to a separate outlet here. So one power plug for this side, one power plug for this side. So this side would get the furnace. This side here would get the furnace, and this side would get any electrical or, you know, if we had to charge cell phones or run um, TVs or something like that off of this side. Um, so we would have two extension cords go into the truck, through the cable, uh, through the house, out to the truck. This would then come back here, power these. So make sure we um, don't power the street. We disconnect the house power. Uh, and we plug it in down here to the generator power uh, and that gives us a uh, alternated or a safe connection. One of the things that also is noticed is that the power from the truck is not grounded so you'll notice here that um, this is a copper ground it is grounded to um, uh, to the to base um, ground load uh, basically you know right into the ground so that way then you don't have to worry about overloads or you know if something were to spike through the system uh, it would be captured by um, or at least be identified as the uh, ground load. One of the things we did try to do is put uh, GFI circuits here uh, and the truck whatever the uh, converter that we have the uh, pure sound wife um, didn't like the CGI, um, CGI can, um, power trips here so we had to just put it to basic um, outlets and obviously ground it to ground. So that was the, the, the what we've uh, ended up with. Uh, obviously you would want to have an outdoor circuit with uh, a GFI uh, connector, but obviously um, didn't work in this case. But we still have now, you know, 50 gallons of, of power, you know, from the truck, which who knows how long that will last for it at idle. Uh, probably pretty good and then obviously this is a, uh, a a furnace that runs off of home heating oil and so if we really needed to we've got a 250 gallon tank here uh, that's obviously full of home heating oil that we could actually pump out and put to the trunk if we needed to have additional power for an extended period of times so that uh, gives us a little bit of extra freedom so thank you very much for watching have a great time and uh, Feel free to join us on SteelSoldiers.com. That's SteelSoldiers.com. Thank you.